What's up, guys? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and I wanted to do a 72-hour update on our Fungi Friday from number Fungi Friday number 14 about the Morcella breeding project. So we um, took a bunch of different samples of some Morcella species that I collected over the years and. Um, I created a spore solution and inoculated it onto these plates. Um, someone had mentioned about mixing all of the different types together and inoculating that onto a plate. So I created this uh, spore slurry mix with all the different species that I did. And I wanted to plate that out as well. Um, so. I'll just go ahead and um, get started by just reviewing these petri dishes after 72 hours of growth. Okay guys, so I'll go through these plate, plate reads. I also have um, this agrocyb parasitica and I'm going to be putting these uh, isolated colonies on their own petri dish as well. Um, I did put the first um, the first isolate that I got is already on a fruiting block, so I'll keep everyone posted once that goes into the fruiting room, and then I'm gonna be following it up with these other phenotypes. But anyway, um, this is the different Morcella species plated out onto various auger types. So you can go check out that video. It's uh, Fungi Friday number 14. Um, but I kind of wanted to just go through the different reads. So you can see right off the bat, um, this MEA plate has a lot of mycelium on it, which is why I chose to use these DRBC plates. So you can see the difference in growth rates um, between these two different plates. So the DRBC has additives that slow down the growth and I'm getting some pretty decent separation here. Um, so you can see some of those darker colonies like on the edge right there. That right there is a yeast colony. So these are also differential media plates because any yeast that would appear, um, it absorbs that pink color and it will turn a really dark pink. So that's an indication of yeast. And then, um, so this is a really clean isolate um, of the Morcella conica early. Um, I'm probably gonna take this colony right at the bottom here. So I guess I can start labeling. If you can see that dot right there, um, there's definitely some yeast colonies. really hard to see that's a really good example too so there's definitely some yeast present on these mushrooms which I totally expected they're wild wild um, collected mushrooms but you can see on these MEA plates there's some of these smaller colonies that these look like bacteria so the DRBC is inhibiting the bacteria and on these black charcoal yeast. It looks like they're getting overrun, um, kind of like these MEA plates. So this is after three days growth. This is a really good example of some yeast that's mixed into that mycelium. So the antibiotics will inhibit any bacteria on here. Um, and then for the blonde morels, we're not, not seeing much, but that's a really good yeast colony. 
and I think I've got some like these four round ones right here are definitely mycelium this big blotchy one here is some bacteria and then all those smaller little round colonies is more yeast so this is yeast on MEA it will just appear as these round little cream colonies where on DRBC it's just going to be these dark pink round colonies and this is the same sample no bacteria lots of bacteria and it looks like I got four colonies of morel none on this so this was a very the blonde morel must have had a lot less spores and then I'm going on to my black charcoal yeast plate for this one and it is covered with bacteria there might be one viable colony off to the side here but I'm gonna steer clear of this plate this one is probably the worst um, all right, so I'm going to isolate these four from the blonde morale. That looks pretty promising. This one doesn't have any growth yet, so I'm gonna set it off to the side. Um, then we've got this burn morale, the Marcella conica, and it looks like this plate is, um, it shows some aphomorphic growth, lots of bacteria in this inoculation point, but over towards the side, I might take some, some of this leading edge. So there's a nice sector here that seems to be growing away from all the contaminants. I'm going to take a piece of this. So that's going to be from the Morcella conica. This is the Importuna. And they very quickly blend with each other. So. You know, I, I'm pretty positive we've got some mated pairings already on the Petri dish. And this one is just riddled with contaminants, but I'm gonna do my best to take this sector right here. And it looks um, pretty clean in this area. So there's a nice segment here of the Morcella Importuna that I'm gonna try to take from. Um, We've got another petri dish here, and you can see it starting to segment a little bit, but the Morcella grows so fast that, you know, there's a very short window of time to gather your isolates. But right here, it seems like there's a couple clean edges that are forming in this vicinity here. So I'm gonna take some segments from that sector um, so this is our Morcella conica, the early season, so that was the smaller one here. And this one looks a lot cleaner, so early season Morcella species, maybe one yeast colony there. Um, I'm going to try to take from this leading edge here, it looks like there's some really good growth. Basically what I'm looking for is less pink color and more white growth. And right in this area here, there seems to be a lot of healthy growth. Um, you can see in this area that I kind of circled, it's very bright white, a lot less contamination. So that is the, the Conica, the early edition. And same thing with this section here. I'll probably pull some mycelium from that leading edge down there. So this one is the Morcella conica, the burn morel. And 
we've got a really nice isolated one here. No contamination on this section right here. And you can see the hyphae are starting to grow right off the plate. So this one looks really promising. I was hoping that I would be able to get a clean isolate on the black charcoal, but it's just not It's not inhibiting enough of the bacteria, so it seems like the bacteria kind of overcrowded these plates, but let's check it out. So this is um, the same species on a black charcoal, and it looks like I might be able to just subculture this, so I'm just going to take a segment off of this plate. It's probably going to be contaminated though. Um, And here's another one of the burn morels. And once again, we've got some really clean isolates from this. With some yeast up in the corner, but it's hard to tell on the camera, but as you get near the fringe of these colonies, you can start to see some hyphae kind of reach out over what would appear to be some potential contaminants. So that is another burn morale. This is the, another blonde morale, and it looks like just yeast once again on this, but I'm gonna give it a couple more days and maybe some hyphae will start to appear. This is the burn morale on MEA, and you can see that mycelium just ripped through this plate and there's definitely some bacteria I'm not even going to open this one Morcella import tuna I can see some nice clean hyphae in this area so I'm going to segment that um, So it seems like the Importuna had the best results. Which it actually looked like the dirtiest sample, so that's a very strange um, you know, outcome. You should never assume anything in science. Um, and this is the Importuna on the black charcoal plates. And wow, we've got some really nice hyphae from this, so I might actually segment some of those, which it's not even the burn morale, which is very strange. I thought that the burn morale might be partial to that media. Um, this is an early burn morale, so it had a little bit less contaminants. Let's check this one on the black charcoal. So once again, it is completely overrun by mycelium and it looks, you know, a little bit healthier than the MEA plate. So I'm going to try to segment from that just so we can see what happens. Um, but you can see that the difference between the MEA and the uh, black charcoal the growth is so much faster. I probably could have looked at these 10 hours ago, but I was sleeping. Um, but I'm going to inoculate a couple plates with the mix um, spores, and then I'm going to segment off some of these sectors next. Okay guys, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is open up some DRVC plates. some more spores on these because they seem to have the best results. Um, and these have been sitting in solution for 
about three days, so there's a chance there could be a lot of bacteria that grew out in this solution. Um, so this is just a mixed morel solution. I just did a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one, um, of all the different phenotypes that we plated out. I guess they're different species, um, dependent on the different region and the different ways that they grow. So the burn route will, will only appear after a forest fire. And the blonde morels are, you know, really early, like May, April, May mushrooms. And then some of those, the import tuna, those are going to appear more during the summer and a different region too. So I'm just going to mix it up. So I'm gathering a mixture of all these different spore types. Um, and then I'm just going to sort of draw up from my syringe here.
never had any issues with them not growing on it and I'm going to try to just isolate um, these colonies that there might be some bacterial contaminants but I'll just subculture those as I move on. So this one, this procedure doesn't have to be sterile since I can already see that there's some bacteria. I'm not too concerned that I'm, you know, going to try to steer clear from it, but I'm not as concerned as I normally would be during my production because right now I'm just trying to clean up All these little colonies here are yeast, and these kind of blotchy, irregular colonies, they contain the mycelium, however, it looks like there's some bacteria that's attached. So what I'm going to do is, right here, um, on this edge of the plate, towards the bottom, there is the least amount of contamination, so I'm going to try to pull a sector from this segment right here and I'm, I'm just hoping that I'm getting a healthy leading edge of that colony and I'll transfer it over to a fresh MEA plate and I'm just going to come over to a different colony and do the same thing. So this is very difficult there's so much contaminants, but we're just going to try to isolate a leading edge and then hopefully hopefully the mycelium will outrun any contaminants and then the next round we'll be able to isolate it further until we get some clean mycelium. So, yeast will only form colonies in, in perfect circles because of how they reproduce. So yeast reproduce by budding means that they can't travel very far, where some, some bacteria, they have flagella, so they'll create rifts or irregular colonies, so that's one way to differentiate between yeast and bacteria, but just looking at the DRBC plates, um, you can see the really dark pink colonies, which that's a Isolates one through four. So there's not really a way to indicate whether these are just a single haploid or a diploid colony. I assume for these ones, because they're so separate, they might be haploid, but because it was a very concentrated spore solution, there's a chance that they already made it. But on this one, um, they didn't really grow that far on the MEA, so I have a feeling that these are just haploid colonies, and I'll cross these in the future. Um, because once they mate, they start to really spread out. Like uh, Marcella Conica. So this is a this is an early one too. So I'm going to take an isolate from this plate. I'm going to take an isolate from there, from there, and there. So I'm going to need four more MEA plates.
fresh. Fresh handle, fresh lid. That way, I don't have to use any planes. Tuna. So I think this is our cleanest, 
in this specimen as far as contamination went. Um, and from most of my research, the import tuna is the most promising species for cultivating morels. But they've also done it with um, the Hanukkah, the Esculata, um, some of the other black morel species like the
whether what you think is good growth or not. But I can see the hyphae sticking up.
before it sporulates because then you're going to end up airing a bunch of mold into your lab and you don't want that. So this is Morgella, Conica, Late.